honors to the elder apostle with great millstone who teach and rule well and shalom to the sincere akyam from his truth and sincerity shalom in this video i want to you know touch on the comment that was you know being made today on you know my video which reads the obvious yet they don't understand uh, in which this guy says salvation is for all anyway good to see another white guy on the right side as far as race is concerned shalom brother I'm going to ignore the latter part of the comment. I want to touch on the first thing that is being mentioned, which is salvation is for all, which that's clearly not the case, man. You know, thus says the Bible. The scriptures are very clear on this, man. You know, and the interpretation of the scriptures, you know, can be, you know, different, man. So the thing is, there's only one interpretation of the scriptures, and that interpretation is that salvation pertains to the nation of Israel. You know, and that the heathen nations, you know, starting off with a so-called white man, you know, will go into hardcore slavery, man. You know, and after a thousand years, you know, the so-called white man, you know, will be destroyed. And all the other heathen nations will go back to the land which they have received from the Heavenly Father. So after that, you know, they're still going to be tribute. Uh, going to be tri tributaries on, uh, on the rest, man. You see? Because the nation of Israel, and the so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, and those scattered among the heathen nations, looking like the heathen nations, but whose lineage does go back to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, according to the father's seed line, they are the true Hebrew Israelites, and the kingdom that is to come after that, this, uh, after that, this current society has collapsed and when this when the messiah has come back you know will be given unto the israelites so without any further ado first things first i want to touch on the word salvation the word salvation in the online etymology dictionary reads the following originally in the christian sense the saving of the soul deliverance from the power of sin and admission to eternal bliss so this is, you know, first and foremost, you know, going, you know, pertaining to the etymology, uh, it's, it's going into, you know, being delivered from the power of sin, which that is something that our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai, you know, came to do for us, man. Once he stepped on the cross and died for our sins, you know, that's when he was delivered, you know, from the strength you know, that Satan, you know, was able to enforce upon us by making us go off, you know, and then being punished for, you know, the transgressing of the law, such as the commandments of the Heavenly Father, man, which, you know, scriptures also mention that the Heavenly Father is only dealing with the nation of Israel and did, that he has only given them the laws, statutes, and commandments pursuant to the book of Psalms. So when we go to Acts the fifth chapter, you know, this is something that indeed is being mentioned, man. This is Acts chapter 5, verse 30. The power of our fathers raised up Yahweh Shai, and ye slew and hanged on the tree. So our Lord and Savior was crucified. Verse 31, him as the most I exalted with his right hand to be a prince and a savior, for to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. So he was extolled, you know, being set upon a very high position so that he was able to become a prince and a savior. And what does a savior do? A savior brings salvation. It says for to give repentance to Israel. So the Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shah, is only dealing with the nation of Israel. Why? Because he's giving unto them repentance and forgiveness of sins. Why do they need that? Because unto them was given the laws, the statutes, and commandments, and they're also the ones that are being punished for the transgression of the laws, the statutes, and commandments, which we can read in the book of Amos, third chapter, which reads, Amos chapter 3, verse 1, Hear this word that the Lord Jehovah has spoken against you, O children of Israel, against the whole family which I brought up from the land of Egypt, 
saying, You only have I known of all the families of the earth, therefore I will punish you for all your iniquity. You hear the Heavenly Father. It's loud and clear when he says that he's only dealing with the nation of Israel and that they are being punished for the transgressions that they committed, which the transgressions, you know, that we committed are measured by the laws, certain commandments, which we, you know, the nation of Israel received, you know, by the hand of Moses, which he received from the Heavenly Father on Mount Sinai, you see? And there was no other nation present there, you know, when Moses received those laws, such the commandments, man. Only the nation of Israel. Loud and clear, man. So now look up the word salvation in the Fadex dictionary. It says preservation or deliverance from destruction, difficulty, or evil. So Salvation also pertains to being in a certain situation out of which you need to be saved. You need to be taken out of that situation. You know, you need to be, you know, delivered out of that. Even the second point, point A says deliverance from the power or penalty of sin and redemption, which we just spoke about, you know. But when we, you know, go back to the, to the first point, point A, it says preservation from or deliverance from destruction, difficulty, or evil. So if you go back, you know, to the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, with the understanding that the Israelites, you know, are suffering those curses, you know, up until this day and age, they still are suffering those curses. Because it says in the book of um, Baruch that we are yet this day in our captivity. You know, we're still in captivity, we're still in slavery, suffering the curses because of the iniquities and the and, and, and the sins that our forefathers committed, which was us actually in the reincarnation. So looking at all these curses, the people upon whom those curses, which are the Israelites, they're in great difficulties, man. You know, their life is a living hell. But they're the ones that need that salvation, man. They're the ones that need to be taken out of those, that situation, you know. All these other nations, they don't need salvation, man. The so-called white man does not need salvation, man. They're in their heaven right now. And people can say that's not the case, but if, if, if they're so-called white people that are not in, in a very good, you know, predicament right now, that makes them a double loser. Why? Because this is supposed to be their kingdom. And the point is, if they're suffering right now, you know, being, basically being hobos, you know, being beggars, hey, the next thing that's going to happen to them is they're going to be in the same predicament, man. They're going to be working their asses off for us, being slaves. You know, they're going to be even in a worse predicament, man. You know, depending on the brother, you know, that is, you know, they're, they're basically their taskmaster. You know, treatment's going to be different for everyone, man. You know, some have worse things in mind than others, you know. So, let me go to Daniel chapter 9, verse 11, which reads, you know, let me drink a little bit first. This is Daniel 9, verse 11. Yea, all Israel have transgressed their law, even by departing, that they might not obey their voice. Therefore, the curse is poured upon us, and the oath that is written in the law of Moses, the servant of the Most High, because we have sinned against him. So, this is what I just explained, man. Deuteronomy chapter 28. The whole list of the curses that are upon our people, man. Leviticus 26 talks about the same thing. Verse 12. And he has confirmed his words, which he spake against us, and against our judges that judged us. Why? Because the Heavenly Father always sent forth his prophets, man, you know, before coming destruction to first warn them, like, hey, stop doing what y'all doing. Otherwise, I'm going to punish y'all for what y'all be doing. You know, for all the wrongs that y'all be doing. Reading on, by bringing upon us a great evil. 
which that is the curses that are being, you know, put upon our people, man. You know, this was in the time of Daniel, you know, which was around 500, you know, BC, between five, uh, yeah, between five and 400 BC, roughly. You know, for under the whole heaven has not been done as has been done upon Jerusalem. So our nation has suffered the most from all these nations upon the earth. And you want to say that salvation is for all? I mean, well, the nation of Israel is the only nation that really needs it. If you see how the so-called Negro is being treated in America, you know? Of course, we also understand that, you know, they were supposed to, you know, to be that example for our nation. You know, so the Heavenly Father is, is, is jacking them up right now, you know, for the worst, man. <clears throat> they were the last ones to remain faithful, but hey, they messed up. Verse 13, as it is written in the law of Moses, all this evil has come upon us. Yet made we not our prayer before the Lord Jehovah our power, that me that we might turn from our iniquities and understand that truth. Verse 14 Therefore hath the Lord Jehovah watched upon the evil and brought it upon us. For the Lord Jehovah our power is righteous in all his works which he doeth, for we obeyed not his voice. You see? So, it's, it's loud and clear, man. The Heavenly Father has put us in a very bad predicament. We need to be delivered out of that, man. Let's look at that word salvation again. It says preservation or deliverance from destruction, which we, we also need salvation from the destruction that is to come. You know, and that is, you know, all in the hands of Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shema, which the only way for us to be delivered out of that is to put in the work for the Heavenly Father, you know, remain faithful, you know, and believe in Him, man, you know. Like the scripture says, I don't trust in my bow, nor my sword, nor my shield, but I trust in Yahweh, Bashem, Yahweh, Shai, you know. So, let me grab a couple of scriptures that a lot of Christians use to say that, you know, that salvation you know and believing in the lord is for everyone that believe well this is john 3 and 16 for the most i so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believed in him should not be should not perish but have everlasting life you know and these christians often want to use the point where it says for the most i so loved the world but the most i does not love the whole world you know, because otherwise the scriptures will be so contradictive. The scriptures will be so contradictive, but the Heavenly Father is not the author of confusion, but of peace, as in all the churches, man. So there has to be an explanation. Because the Heavenly Father also mentions that these nations are like the spit, you know, and like a, a, a little bit of water that drops from a, from a, from a bucket, man, from a vessel. You know, so it's hard to understand when, when you would read that. And then here it says, the most God loved the world, and therefore he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believed on his son would have everlasting life. That That's kind of strange. But it's not, because these nations, you see the nations are not included in salvation. You know? But it only makes sense if, if, if the truth is given unto you, man. You know, by the Spirit of the Heavenly Father, you see. That's why we also have Isaiah chapter 45, verse 17, which reads, But Israel, hey, hey, but Israel shall be saved in the Lord Jehovah with an everlasting salvation. Ye shall not be ashamed nor confound the world without end. This scripture, basically, in the Dutch we say, two flies with a single clap. You know, which is similar to the one with, you know, you, you basically, um, two birds with one stone. <laughs> you know, because here it mentions Israel, you know, that they shall be saved, you know, in the Lord Jehovah with an everlasting salvation. 
the salvation pertains to Israel. But also, here it mentions that Israel, you know, is considered to be a world without end. You know, there's not going to be an end to the world of Israel, you know. So the world in John 3 and 16 is also pertaining to the nation of Israel. And, you know, not, I'm not even going into the meaning of the word world over there, you know, which the word over there means cosmos, which means a, a arranged um let me still do it man let me still do it the word cosmos you see it here and it says a harmonious arrangement arrangement of constitution order of government which you know the, the the nation of israel you know is a is a government within itself you know we we used to have our own you know kings you know set up over us eventually we had the high priest you know, and, and um, the Sanhedrin, you know, that would, you know, discuss certain matters. Huh. You know, so the nation of Israel, you know, is supposed to be that uh, a government, you know, with that harmonious arrangement. Why? Because we have the scriptures which guide us in the right direction. You see? So let me move on. This is John chapter 11, verse 49. And one of them, named Caiaphas, being the high priest that same year, said unto them, Ye know nothing at all, nor consider that it is expedient for us that one man should die for the people and that the whole nation perish not. So back then, you know, he, he was basically under Roman um, tribute. And um, as long as our people would keep the peace with the Romans, you know, we would not cause any troubles. You know, we would be able to you know, do what we do, man. You know, serve the Heavenly Father, you know, and do our own things according to the scriptures. But when Yahweh Shai came on the scene, that stirred up a lot of commotion and caused chaos, man. So here the high priest, you know, his name is Caiaphas. He mentioned like it's better if, if, if that one individual, which you know, he meant Yahweh Shai with that, that he should die, and that basically, you know, the way that Israel was, you know, set up and established back then, you know, could remain, you know. <clears throat> Verse fifty one. In this spake he none of himself, but being high priest that year, he prophesied that Yahweh Shai should die for that nation. The thing is. It indeed was already foreordained that Jehovah Shai, you know, would die. You know, but he did not understand what he meant, what he said. You know, he did he did not know what he said. But it was basically him prophesying, you know, about the death of our Lord and Savior Jehovah Shai. That he should die, you know, for that nation, which that nation refers to the nation of Israel. You know, but verse 52, you know, might bring a belated confusion to some individuals. You know, they want to say, but not for that nation only, but also for the others, which that's not the case. Verse 52, and not for that nation only, but that also he should gather together in one the children of the Most High that were scattered abroad. Let, let me look up the word scattered abroad. Because the word scattered abroad, it goes back to the word diaspora, let me see, here, disperse abroad, it says to scatter. To scatter abroad, you know, and what nation, you know, was scattered amongst the four corners of the earth by the heavenly Father? You know, the nation of Israel, which even if you go into the word diascorpio, it really resembles, you know, the diaspora, you know, the diaspora, which the diaspora, 
you know, is pertaining, you know, to the Israelites that were exiled from the land. You know, and that is something that you also need to understand that history is a part of the understanding of these scriptures. You know, because in the book of Kings, the book of Samuel, Chronicles, you know, it talks about the events in which, you know, our people, you know, were also uh, taken into captivity, you know, and uh, taken out of the land as well, man. An example of that is, um, if I'm correct, because I always mistake them, is Second Kings chapter seventeen, verse twenty on down. You know, which which there talks about, you know, how the Northern Kingdom, you know, was subjugated, you know, under the um, under the Assyrians, man. You know, and 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 that eventually other nations were placed in the land of Israel, which you know they was placed in the land of Samaria. Which that's basically a province of the land of Israel, you know. But this is James chapter 1, verse 1. James is servant of the Most High and of the Lord Jehovah Shai to the 12 tribes which are scattered abroad greeting. So James, he was directing his, his, his letter, you know, towards the 12 tribes which are scattered abroad. You know, John chapter 11, you know, verse 52 says, that Yahweh Shai did not only die for the nation you know, of Israel that was still present in the land, which that referred to you know, Judah, Benjamin, and Levi that were considered you know, the southern kingdom or, or the Jews. And then you also had those that indeed from the time that they was uh, uh, subjugated you know, under the uh, captivity of the... Um, Syrians, that some of them during that time, uh, around that time, also decided to um, um, go back to Jerusalem, you know, but you can read about that in the book of Chronicles as well, you know, that um, as, um, as a matter of fact, let me just go to it. Um, Second Kings chapter seventeen, and um, let me start at verse twenty-three. Unto the Lord Yahweh removed Israel out of his sight, as he had said to all his servants the prophets. So was Israel carried away out of their own land to Assyria unto this day. But Heavenly Father, He took away, you know, the um, the Northern Kingdom. Eh? Verse 24, and the king of Assyria brought man from Babylon and from Susa and from Ava and from Hamath and from Sepharvaim and placed them in the cities of Samaria instead of the children of Israel. And they possessed Samaria and dwelt in the cities thereof. So Eden was placed in the land of Samaria, which that is a province of the nation of, of, of the land of Israel, Selassie. You know? Um, what is it? Second Chronicles 11. Let me see. Yes, this is Second Chronicles chapter eleven and verse sixteen. And after them, out of all the tribes of Israel, such as set their hearts to seek the Lord Jehovah of Israel, came to Jerusalem to sacrifice unto the Lord Jehovah, power of their fathers. So, when um, Jeroboam, you know, caused the Northern Kingdom to cease the worship. You know, in, in Jerusalem, you know, <laughs> some of some of the nation uh, uh, um, of Israel that pertain to the Nordic Kingdom, you know, was like, hey, um, we're going to join them to um, the kingdom of Judah. As it reads in verse 17, so they strengthened the kingdom of Judah and made Rehoboam, the son of Solomon, strong three years. For three years, they walked in the ways of David and Solomon. So that's a quick side note um, concerning this, this scattering, you know, how that took part. Um, let me go to Luke chapter 1 
And let me start at verse 67. And his father Zechariah was filled with the Holy Spirit and prophesied, saying, which Zechariah is the father of John the, uh, the Baptist. Um, verse 68. Blessed be the Lord Jehovah, the power of Israel, for he hath visited and redeemed his people. So this is pertaining to the nation of Israel, what is being mentioned here. Verse 69, and hath raised up a horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David. So the heavenly father, you know, like well, um, what Zechariah is, is, is mentioning here, he says that the heavenly father has raised up a horn of salvation, you know, for the nation of Israel, which comes from the house of his servant David. Because Yahushai is from the lineage, you know, of King David, man. Verse 70, as he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets, which have been since the world began, that we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all that hate us, to perform the mercy promised to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant. The oath which he swore to our father Abraham, that he would grant unto us, that we being delivered out of the hand of our enemies might serve him without fear. So, here it's mentioned that the nation of Israel are the ones to receive the horn of salvation, which is Yahushai, and that they are the ones that need to be saved from their enemy. You see, it's being mentioned a couple of times, you know, in these last couple of verses, man. You know, so how much more scriptures do you need? Well, I'm going to give you one more. This is Matthew chapter 1, verse 21. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Yahushai, for he shall save his people from their sins. So, Yahushai is an omen omen, which that is what Yahushai came to do. You know? Why? Because he shall save his people from their sins. You know, salvation you know, also goes into... The difference from the power or penalty of sin redemption. You see? So Yahweh Shai, he, <clears throat> you know, he encompasses, you know, really, you know, that, that word salvation, man. Because he's the one that saves us, you know, from the wicked, the wicked uh, flesh that we have. But he also, you know, is going to bring us salvation, you know, from this wicked society that we're in. You know? So, salvation is for all. That's a blatant lie. You know, you heard to say, you know, this video was edifying. You know, and with that, I want to give all praise, honor, and glory unto Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham Rakakadash. Double honors to the elder apostles, his great millstone, his teaching rule well, and Shalom to the sinister Akim, and his true prosperity. Shalom.